You are all ambitious lords serving the house of Tudor in the court of King Henry VIII. Of course, you're all vying for the highest rank by having the most prestige by the end of the game. Players will first perform chamber assignment. Here they'll place between 0 and 2 courtiers that round, denoted by the random scenario card revealed during setup. They'll place one and then the next player places one and so on. Space is limited so choose wisely. Next, chamber entry will be performed. The courtiers will enter their chamber in the order placed and pushing out any other courtiers from top to bottom if space is not available. We then enter the Lord placement phase. Each player starting with the first places their Lord on the Lord chair in one of the chambers. These placements will determine which chamber performed their actions. If no Lord is there, the courtiers wait until the next round. When the active player's turn comes up, he'll activate one of his courtiers where there's a Lord from any player and perform a one of the chamber's action or one of the free actions here by sliding his courtier behind the chair. The active player may also choose to activate his Lord instead and perform both actions in that chamber. Actions in this game will deal with either courtier movement in the court, gaining cards, and using rings. Movement in the court will have you place and move courtiers, usually from the bottom up. Depending on the chamber action you took, it might require you to discard faction cards matching the space you want to move into or have the ring's color matching it. You'll pick up any faction tokens you move onto, which were set up randomly at the beginning of the game, and you'll also pick up the round influence or intrigue token on the space you land on. These can be used as denoted by the scenario cards. Whenever a courtier leaves a space, refill it with a square faction token. Influence and intrigue tokens are never refreshed. Cards used to move are discarded. You'll gain these cards by chamber actions where you choose one or gain more, but they have to be of the color of the rings you possess. If you reach a top space of a column, congratulations, you have a new title and position in court. Besides possibly scoring points depending on the scoring cards drawn during setup, you'll gain a new ring. This will be from the supply if no courtier was there or from a player whose courtier you just bumped. These rings will mostly have two functions. Color will usually tell you which card you'll gain. Placement will give you bonuses when performing specific actions from A to F as clearly listed behind your player shields. When all players have performed their action from courtiers in the chambers containing lords, we go to the end of round. All players regain their lords, any end of round scoring cards are totaled, and you move the round marker up, and the player to the previous start player becomes the first player this coming round. If the frame cannot be moved up, we reach the end of the game. Now, these will differ from scenario and scoring cards drawn at the beginning of the game, but they might include scoring mechanism involving same or different square faction tokens, courtier position, etc, etc. The player with the most prestige wins. And there you have Tudor in a nutshell. Obviously, as you can tell, Academy Games, as always, has provided quality components for a pretty unique game. Beside it being beautiful to look at, I think you can imagine the game has some solid mechanics in it, which is rife with tactical and strategical decision making. What really impresses me about this game is possibly the replay value, since both red and green scoring cards, as well as the blue scenario cards, will make every game very different. Player scaling is handled in an alright fashion, making less seats available for chamber assignments, but it certainly is best played at a full player count. The theme is captured nicely. Regardless what scoring and scenario cards came up, courtier positioning is extremely important from the court to the chamber assignment, giving the game a rank feel in a sort of Game of Thrones manner. Besides your own ambitions, you'll keep an eye out for other players who are trying to soar their way to the king's heart. A constant battle of position gives the game a nice tug of war feel between the players. Besides the player shields sometimes falling down a little too easily when there's many rings on it, it is an excellent game. We give Tudor an 8 out of 10.